Microsoft Word comes with several preset keyboard shortcuts. For example, you can hold down the Control key and press the letter B to bold a piece of text, or press Control and I at the same time to make something italic. Each shortcut is only for one action, but Word also lets you create your own customized shortcuts for tasks that you need to do over and over. That way you don't have to do each individual step each time, but you can simply use your macro to do all the steps at once. Let's begin by recording a macro in a new document. Up in the top navigation, click on the tab for View. On the right, you'll see an option for macros, so click the arrow to open that menu. Now, if your macro involves several steps, you might want to jot some notes or practice it a couple of times before you record it. It will save you time in the long run. But assuming you're ready to roll, just click on Record Macro. First thing you need to do is name it. You can name the macro anything you want, but the name can't contain spaces. Try choosing an intuitive name to help you remember what the macro does. I'm going to call this one Bold Italic. Then you need to decide where to store it. You can store your macro in two places, in your document or in the global template for Microsoft Word. I'm going to go with the default here, which is the global template, so I can use the same macro in other documents. If you want, you can even add a description of the macro down below. And then finally, you need to decide if you want to assign a button or create a keyboard command. If you click the button icon, the dialog box opens for Word options. If you click the keyboard icon, you get the dialog box for customized keyboard. I'm going to assign the macro to a quick access toolbar button. OK, here's where things get good. I've got the Word Options page open, and I'm going to highlight the name of my macro in the list at the left. Then click the Add button. Now the macro is showing up in the list of quick access toolbar options on the right. So click OK. You can see the cursor has turned into a little cassette tape icon. That means Microsoft Word is recording your macro, so the next keystrokes you do are going to be what it creates as the macro. I want my macro to make text bold and make it italicized. So first I'll do the shortcut for bold text, which is Control plus B, and then the shortcut to use italics, Control plus I. If you need to pause your recording, you can do that back up in the Macros group in the top navigation. And when you're done, you can click to stop recording. Now you'll see a little button for your macro in the Quick Access toolbar. You can click on that button and type some text to test the macro. Of course, if you assign a keyboard shortcut to your macro, instead of creating a button for the toolbar, you will need to record a shortcut keyboard combination. All of the other steps are the same. Let's take a quick look. I'll create the same macro using a keyboard shortcut instead of the toolbar button. So I'm going to go back to the Macros group to record the macro, and I'm going to name it and decide where to store it. Remember, I can't use the same name as an existing macro, but since in this example I'm creating a keyboard shortcut to do the same thing, I'll just name it something similar. Now I'm going to choose the Keyboard option instead of the Button option. This time we get the Customize Keyboard dialog box instead of the box for Word options. So type in the key combination that you want to assign to the macro. I'm going to make it so you hold down both the Control and Alt keys and type the letter B to make the text both bold and italicized at once. So when I hold down those three keys, the dialog box fills in the command. Now click Assign, and then click the Close button. There's our cassette tape icon again. That means the macro is going to record the keystrokes that we do. So I'm going to repeat the same keystrokes that I just did in the dialog box, holding down the Control and Alt keys while typing the letter B. Then I need to do my two commands, Control plus B for bold, and Control plus I for italics. And when I'm done, I'll go back up to the Macros group and select Stop Recording. All done. Now when I'm typing, I can just use those shortcut keys to perform the macro function.